All right, we're going to talk about glycolysis. We got glycolysis. And we talked about earlier different energy systems. And we've already gone over the ATP energy system, so ATP CP system, and now talking about the glycolytic energy system, and we also talked about the aerobic oxidative energy system. So that's just a little bit of a review from our past videos. And um, since we've already gone over the ATP C CP system, I'm trying to go in the order that you would normally learn about these energy systems in an exercise physiology class. So this one here got us started, got the workout started, but events lasting in between about 10 seconds to two minutes, we're using glycolysis. So these are events that are using um, glucose, to generate ATP because we've used up all the available energy store. So let's talk a little bit about a macronutrient called glucose. So you have three main macronutrients. You're going to have protein, fats, and glucose. And all can be used as an energy source. But right now we're just going to talk about glycolysis so let's write down what glucose looks like. So we've got six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens. And we'll talk a little bit about this and break it down when we talk about cellular respiration. But right now I want to keep it pretty simple. So let's talk more about glycolysis. I'm going to write glucose over here again. And I'm going to simplify this even more. And I'm not going to draw out the hydrogens and oxygens. I'm just going to deal with that carbon backbone because this is going to be important for that lecture. So just, we just have to pretend and envision that these carbons are linked to oxygens and hydrogens that make up the glucose molecule. So. Let's talk about how glycolysis works. So we have these six carbons that are linked. I'll bring this up here real quick. And so we want to break this down. We want to break it down into a pGAL. So I'm going to write that out here. So there's our pGAL, and I won't go any more in depth on that because I want to keep this as simple as possible. There's our phosphate with these three carbons. Let's do the same thing over here. So we have a phosphate with three carbons. That's going to be our pGAL. So we've got two pGAL. And we want to continue to break this down into pyruvate. Now, this is a simple, simplified version of glycolysis. There are a bunch of other intermediate steps in there that I'm leaving out, but I want you to get the overall big picture of, of what's going on. So this is our pyruvate. This is a U, not a V. Pyruvate. So this one's also a pyruvate. Okay, so there's glycolysis. Now let's, let's kind of talk about what's going on. We're losing two ATP just to get this process going. So to break this down, this is our investment phase. So that's going to cost us two ATP. So this is two ATP for the investment phase. So we're having to use 2 ATP, but down here in the payoff phase, it's going to pay off for us. So we'll write 
payoff phase here. So that's going to give us two ATPs. And we're going to reduce NAD plus NAD plus to NADH. So we're reducing that. And I'll explain reduction and oxidation in another video so that you can kind of make that chemistry link to what we're doing here. So on this side, we're also getting two ATPs. And again, we're reducing NAD plus to NADH. So this is really the end product here, end product of glycolysis. So we can use this pyruvate in cellular respiration if the oxygen is present. And um, we'll talk about that a little bit later, but let's look at all what we would get out of glucose and how it's really used as an energy system and how we're generating the energy. So after this is all said and done, we're going to net to ATP. So we're this, there's our energy we're creating from this energy system. We're going to get two NADH. Oops, that should be a D. NADH. So we got two NADHs, two ATPs, and we'll get two pyruvates. And so you may ask, well, why are we just getting two ATPs here? Uh, when up here it looks like, let me bring that down, that we've gotten two ATPs here and two ATPs here. And you're like, well, why is it that four ATPs? It looks like we've made four ATPs. Well, we had this investment phase. So we have to take that away from these four ATPs that we're, when we're breaking peak out down to pyruvate. Um, we are generating four ATPs, but we lost two in the investment phase. So that's the reason I've got two ATPs down here. And these NADHs that we are creating will eventually be used in cellular respiration as will the pyruvates. And we'll talk about that later once we get to cellular respiration. I'm going to give you a, a rough overview of cellular respiration in the next video and then we'll get more complex. So I, if I give you the big picture first you'll, you'll understand it better when I get a little bit more complex. So let's break down glycolysis. We, here's our glucose and so here's our six carbon backbone and we broke it down to P-gal but in order to do that we had to use two ATPs and notice here we have two P gals so we got two P gals on each side for one molecule of glucose if you move down here once we break P gal down to pyruvate we're going to net two ATPs from this process you see four ATPs here but we again we're already um, we've already used two ATPs up here so we net two ATPs from that, and here we've reduced NADH and NADH over here. So it gave us two NADHs, and then we got two pyruvates, and so that's what we have down here. So that gives you a rough overview of glycolysis, and we'll talk later um, about cellular respiration. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.